Imagine, if you will, a world frozen in time. Picture a beautifully bizarre amalgamation of Neolithic culture and proto-steampunk fantasy, where strange creatures roam outside the walls of a large city, teeming with life and activity, but also harboring at its core a dark secret. This city is Halstom, the principal source of civilization in the ancient land of Xenozoic, and the secret it contains is up to you to discover. Released in 2009, the world of Xenoclash was the brainchild of brothers Andres, Carlos, and Edmundo Bordeaux who had cut their teeth in the industry by developing full conversion mods for Doom 2, the second of which, entitled Zanzan, boasted an art style that would clearly inspire later titles. Their development company, Ace Team, based out of one of the most renowned, world-famous capitals of video game development, San... Mm, San... Wait, where are we going? What's all this then? Uh, Santiago, Chile? <laughs> you serious? Became the genesis point for an extremely ambitious idea. It was conceived as an open world, brawler shooter RPG hybrid that quickly became too much bite for the chew. So they stripped it down and scaled it back to a linear, first-person, melee-focused combat game. The resulting product immediately caught my eye when I saw it on a shelf, and from the moment I opened the bifold packaging, I knew I had to give it a try. Boy, I was not disappointed, and Xenoclash quickly became one of my all-time favorites. But time, as time does, marches unhaltingly forward, and nostalgia tends to cloud objectivity. So I decided, over 13 years later to dust off my DVD and give it another open-minded playthrough. How does it stack up versus my subjective memories? Let's find out. I won't let you get away with it! <laughs> the story starts with a mysterious confrontation, followed by our protagonist, whose name is Gat, this is Gat, by the way, coming to in a scene of carnage. His parent, a weird humanoid bird creature named Father Mother, lies dead beside him, and his blood is on Gat's hands. As he flees, we are introduced to his friend, Deidre, as she comes to his aid. Together, they attempt to escape through a gate as Gat's, uh, uh siblings? Catch up to them. Gat's sister, Remot, pleasantly greets her brother and wishes him well. You're no brother of mine, ah, Gat! Brother of God! You killed father, mother, you worthless cack! What? We'll eat your pan and tough in your skull! Death. Huh? But seriously, the colorful gobbledygook words used in these dialogue sequences is a really nice writing touch. What's the hurry? What happened? Hey! Cack! And on that note, one of my favorite aspects of the game are these versus screen slide-ins. They really add an extra bit of flair, and whenever you see them, you know crap is about to go down. I love it. I'll kill you! So, Gat defends himself from his infuriated family members long enough to escape Halston. But when Gat seems stoically reserved to his fate, Deidre convinces him to get on his feet and flee with her into the wilderness. It is here that we are introduced to the Corwid of the Free, a collection of wild barbarian people whose minds are not slaves to any kind of rational thinking. The Corwids are not slaves of reality, so they can be insane. 
you almost seem to admire them. In these battles, I found myself shaking off the old rust and really starting to appreciate how smooth and free-flowing the combat system is. The fighting system is simple to learn and about as deep as you want it to be. Do you want to perfect every move and become an unstoppable one-man army? Knock yourself out. Want to finish the game only using deflect kicks and haymakers? Well, for the most part, you can do that too. There's an assortment of crazy weapons available, but they are rarely required. With the exception of knocking down stunned brutes, or a few moments where the script happens to call for them. I usually found myself avoiding them, preferring to use my hands and feet to clobber my way through the roughly five hour campaign. In fact, there's an achievement for doing precisely that, if you're interested in such things. As the story progresses, Deidre's constant prodding proves fruitful. What's so special about these crackpots? I don't get it. And Gat reluctantly fills in the backstory of events leading up to Father Mother's killing, telling of his time living amongst the Corwoods, and his advanced combat training by a mysterious fighting master named Metamok. Their journey takes them into the wild desert, where they are accosted by a blind assassin named Hunter, who was hired by Gat's family to kill him. You have a powerful family, Gat. They offer a handsome reward for your head. Knowing that they are not safe, the two travel to the end of the world, a hauntingly mysterious land of fog and crystal. This section of the game is... the least interesting and most repetitive, and I'm always glad to be done with it when it's over. This place is horrible. During their visit to this desolate place, they awaken Golem, an ancient creature of immense strength and wisdom who decides to assist them in their struggle, but only if they return to Halston. Okay, back we go. The unlikely trio battles their way back to the city, fighting their way through Mucolosaurus worshippers, Gat's family members, Corwids, flashbacks, and uh overlong exposition sequence. History. History is the pattern of stories. Upon their arrival at their old home, they discover that, surprise! Father Mother, despite now being the texture of raw hamburger, is still very much alive and very, very disappointed with Gat. Gat's be a bad boy. <coughs> The two have it out for a second time, and after Golem saves Gat from certain death at the hands of Father Mother, he chooses to mercifully spare his battered parent. It is at this moment that Golem steps forward and reveals Father Mother's secret. Father Mother is neither your father nor your mother. Huh? That he is a baby-stealing crook who built his family by pilfering the children of others and raising them as his own. With the cat out of the bag, Golem promises to create a new, more meaningful family bond between the siblings, and then... What? It's over? <laughs> well, <laughs> to say the ending is cryptic is a massive understatement, but as a whole, Xenoclash is a great action brawler that deserves more acclaim than it got upon release. I mean, what other game can you think of that won PC Gamer Game of the Year accolades and yet still kind of flew under the radar? It's unique, absurd, and insane. And yet anchored by a relatably poignant story and powered by great fighting mechanics. <laughs> The voiceover work is mostly well done, headlined by video game and television pro Eric Gusky, doing his gravel-throated monotone that he's probably best known for, despite being an entertainingly versatile voice actor. How'd I get here? And where's the preacher? Look for a crossbow. We'll need some light also. It'll be dark out in the woods. Let me tell you about a real hero, my boy. His name is Tarboy. You can travel the rails to a world of adventure. Just add your imagination. Prepare for defensive maneuvers. 
Engage. Time for Operation Snack Shack. Yum, 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 yum. Using building science, they consider everything to design the right system for your home. Armenia peed on herself and starved to death anonymously. What? The rest of the voice cast, including the three Bordeaux brothers, perform weirdly haunting deliveries befitting the weirdly haunting world the characters live in. Aren't you one of Father Mother's men? You should know you're not allowed to enter. Let's see what else you remember from your drink. Hey, steps were supposed to shoot. You wouldn't want some thief to know you're not from around. You, you have, have no business with, with our, our family. family. It's opening the gate. And I would be remiss if I were not to mention the excellent soundtrack by professional musician Patricio Menezes. I feel he does a perfect job capturing the ineffable otherworldliness of Xenozoic and of those who inhabit it. So a player could be forgiven if they were to dismiss Father Mother as nothing more than a thieving liar. Yes, he's a kidnapper who would prefer to throw Gat under the bus rather than to admit to his crimes. But he's also something of a tragic figure that I can't help but, well, feel sympathy for. He is a serial kidnapper, and yet he's tender and nurturing. He wants nothing more than to love and be loved in return. I found myself feeling frankly kind of bad for this surprisingly relatable villain. I mean, who amongst us doesn't know at least one person who desperately wants children of their own, but just can't have them? And this, ladies and gentlemen, is a great example of highly effective dramatic writing. Bravo, Ace Team. Bravo. In 2009, Ace Team captured lightning in a bottle with its inaugural title, Xenoclash. It had everything going for it, from the insane art, to the writing, to the surreal atmosphere, to the fluid fighting mechanics, and an energy level that the 2013 sequel just couldn't quite match. But that's the thing with catching lightning in a bottle. It usually only happens once. While it isn't perfect, Xenoclash has always been one of my favorite games and still remains so to this day. I highly recommend it to anyone who enjoys first person action games, especially those with plot driven narratives. All right, folks, that's it for now. I hope you enjoyed this retrospective and if you get a chance, Check out Clash, Artifacts of Chaos, which is a spin-off story set in the world of Xenozoic, featuring what appears to be Dark Souls-style fighting mechanics. It was released during the production of this video, and I'm certainly looking forward to trying it. Thank you very much for watching, and take care. Wait a second, this guy looks kind of familiar. This is your brain on drugs. Any questions? <laughs>